So genomics is a technology that is necessary to be used in crop improvement for accelerated genetic gain. And because of that, it needs to be incorporated in its essence into each aspect of breeding. We call genomics, we divide genomics into structural and functional genomics. And structural genomics provides the tools as molecular markers, which could be SNPs, DARTs, or the markers that are used to identify those varieties or any plant material that can perform at its best under a given circumstance, under a given agronomic situation, under a given uh, environmental condition. And this is where the markers provide that advantage for accelerated genetic gain. And this also happens in terms of biotic and abiotic stresses where markers as tools provide the means of identification of material that can be selected uh, in a fast pace. This is a question that de is determined by the nature of the crop that you're working on. So in the case of crops that are routinely worked on by the public sector, by the private sector, and in the public arena quite a bit, will already have the genomics technologies available and the tools available. But for crops such as ours, such as where the CG is working on, called often crops occasionally, these are crops that do not have markers that are confidently able to call an improvement yet. So these markers need to be developed within the programs, within the CG. So the investment has to be within the CG itself. High-end technologies that contribute towards the development of the infrastructure are about um, for screening platforms or for marker platforms that can be developed by niche companies, but for the identification of specific markers and the utilization of those against the crops that we're working on, we do it ourselves. CG needs to be doing the investment on it ourselves. At the present time, the investment would need to be higher in molecular breeding or in genomics technologies. And the reason for that is because a per sample cost has not come to the level that is economically efficient. And that drives a, probably a 70 to 30 investment between genomics and traditional breeding. But that will change once we have the technologies um, usable at an economic scale. And then it could be equal for both genomics and, um, and traditional breeding. But then again, we'll need to consider the aspect of phenotyping. And phenotyping would become, at that point, the most expensive item. And we're still not there in terms of precise phenotyping for the traits that we need and to be utilizing those phenotyping tools efficiently enough in combination with the markers that we have so that accelerated genetic gain is achieved in all aspects of the meaning of the term. So phenotyping will start to cost more when molecular breeding and traditional breeding equalizes out in expense. Well, genomics efforts and molecular breeding material are already in the field currently. And this is a routine process for crops like maize, rice, and all of the major crops, and also crops that the industry focuses on um, to a great extent. Uh, vegetable crops would also be part of that. So um, for the crops that we are working on, some of them have their genomes already elucidated. So they should be um, going into molecular breeding or already in molecular breeding at this, at this time. So some material is available, but the pace will have to pick up. Now, when we talk about um, molecular breeding and the utilization for any crop, we look at the potential genetic gains for each of these crops. 
for crops, the major ones that have been worked on quite a bit, the yield gap is almost plateauing. In those cases, in order to have genetic gain, markers become very prominent. For us, the genetic variability still remains quite a bit to be tapped as yet. So markers can make an improvement, but it's gradual, and we can come to a point in five, a um, little bit over five years, to be using it routinely in crop improvement. Well, um, at that point, then, the utilization of markers for simple versus complex traits becomes important. So simple traits, which are usually governed by a few genes, and which do not show a lot of genotype by environment interactions. These traits um, can be immediately identified or better identified, easier identified with molecular markers. We're not yet there, especially for our crops, especially for the less worked on crops, um, to get a genome-wide evaluation or a genome selection process addressed, which will be better for complex traits development.